The gospel reading for today from the lectionary is taken from John chapter 17, 1 to 11. And I'm reading from the New American Standard Bible. Jesus spoke these things and lifting up his eyes to heaven, he said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you, even as you gave him authority over all flesh, that to all whom you have given him, he may give eternal life. This is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on the earth, having accomplished the work which you have given me to do. Now, Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. I have manifested your name to the men whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they have come to know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words which you gave me I have given to them, and they received them, and truly understood that I came forth from you, and they believed that you sent me. I ask on their behalf. I do not ask on behalf of the world, but of those whom you have given me, for they are yours, and all things that are mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. I am no longer in the world, and yet they themselves are in the world, and I come to you, Holy Father. Keep them in your name, the name which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are. One of the great privileges we have as people of faith or as Christians is to be able to bring our petitions and desires to our Father. We have a Father that is ever ready to listen to our needs and our prayers. Um, one of the things we enjoy most is when we know that somebody is standing with us in prayer. When somebody cares enough to take our burdens to the Lord for us, we, are, we, we, we feel good about those times. All of us, one way or the other, have come to a point in our lives that we desire that somebody will pray with, with us. And that is, that is what our faith has, has given us. We all need prayer. We all need that somebody will stand with us in difficult times. Uh, Marian Snowfield, uh, one of the speakers at last year's um, New Room Conference, she runs an organization in England and that reaches out to the young people in high schools. And then she reported that one of the lines that they have seen that God uses to open people up to listen to the gospel is when they ask somebody, can I pray with you? As soon as they start praying, they realize that people, they, their children, are, they break down and then they are able to, to listen to the gospel. All of us, in a way, need prayer or we stand in need of somebody standing with us in prayer. I remember growing up in Ghana uh, vividly. Uh, I was around six or seven years old and I had caught, caught the malaria. I had caught malaria. And at that time, malaria was the lead killer of, of children. And one night as I laid in bed, I mean, um, I had high temperature and all that, I felt that a hand was laid on me. And so I was awoken by that hand. And I was wondering, who is this? And I started hearing somebody pray. As, as I listened to the voice, I knew that that was my mom praying for me. That scenario, that scene has stuck with me all my life. Every time I'm going through difficult times, I can count on it. And I know that mommy is praying for me. And I, the test we have before us today is Jesus praying before his passion. This is the longest continuous recorded prayer of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus is depicted 
in the Gospels as a man of prayer. He was a man of deep prayer. He prayed often. He prayed intensely. The disciples actually admired that part of his life. Out of his busy schedule, he would always make time to pray for, for or he would pray to, to pray to his, that, his father. You know, one time the, after prayer, he went to him, the Lord, teach us to pray. Show us how to pray. Interestingly, we don't have the, it recorded that they asked Jesus to show them how to preach or how to evangelize or anything. He did, asked him to show them how to pray. This shows how significant prayer was to the ministry of Jesus. Jesus once told Peter, he said that, Hey, Simon, Satan has sought to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you. That, that meant a lot to Peter. That meant a lot to the disciples to know that Jesus Christ is praying for them. They knew he prayed and they were aware and they knew that he prayed for them. In this prayer, we see Jesus praying for himself, praying for the disciples, and then praying for you and I who will come to believe in his name. And so Jesus is praying for you. Jesus prayed for you. He's praying for you. Dr. Steve Siemens, in his book, The Unseen Realm, he discusses the present day ministry of Jesus Christ. You know, a lot of us know about Jesus coming into the world through the incarnation. And we also know that he will come again. That is our eschatological hope that he will come again. But what is he presently doing? In that book, he discusses that Jesus' present day ministry is in prayer and intercession. Jesus is praying for you and I presently. He bases his argument on Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25, which says that consequently, he's able for all times to save those who approach God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. He always lives to make intercession for them. This is comforting for me when I got this truth and I realized that presently all that Jesus Christ is doing for you and I is that he is praying for us every time he is doing whatever he is doing at this time is that he is praying for you. That is so refreshing for me. And Hebrews chapter 2 verse 17 also presents Jesus as a merciful and faithful high priest. He is a merciful and faithful high priest, which means that Jesus' prayer for you, because he is faithful, he is also reliable. He doesn't leave his post. He's always at post praying for you and I. He's praying for you. He's faithful, a faithful high priest and a faithful intercessor because he knows the God's will for you per time. Every time, every moment, he knows what God wills for you. And so he prays according to the will of God per time for you. He's also a faithful high priest because he knows your very need. Hebrews 2 says that he knows our makeup. He knows the things that we feel, our, our, our situations that we cannot even talk to anybody about. Jesus Christ knows that deep need of yours. And that is how he prays. He prays for you because he has knowledge of your, of your needs. And so he's a faithful intercessor. Jesus Christ is always, always, all the time praying for you. You know, at times in my walk with the Lord, I feel that I have not prayed enough. There are times that honestly, I don't even feel like praying. Even in all those times, Jesus Christ is praying for you. Don't believe that lie of the devil that says that bad things happen to you because maybe you did not pray enough. Every point in your life, Jesus Christ is covering you with prayer. You are covered. He's always praying for you, irrespective of what you are going through. 
One of the things that had made my mom's prayer stick with me all my life was not just because she prayed for me at night, was not just because I got healing from it. The thing that had made it stuck with me is, is, is because of what I heard her say in her prayer. Don't let my son die, please, Lord. Save him. Those words shows me where my mom's heart is. If there's something to even doubt her love for me, those times, that time in his presence when she could pray those things for me on my behalf proves to me where her heart is, that she loves me. She loves me unconditionally. In this text, we get to hear the heartbeat of Jesus. You know, as I said earlier, Jesus is depicted to be a person of prayer, irrespective of his busy schedule. He made time to pray. But this chapter, whole of John chapter 17, is dedicated to his prayer. And so it shows me and you and I that his heart beat. In the verse 11, as I read, he says that, Holy Father, keep them in your name which you have given me keep them in your name which you have given me beloved i want you to know that jesus is praying for your keeping the same way can be translated protect the same way can be translated god in these times with all this pandemic going on it is refreshing to know that jesus is praying for your keeping He's praying that God will protect you. His protection will be on you. That is relaxing for me. And that is refreshing to know that he is praying for my keeping. Then he goes on to pray that, that they may be one as we are. That they may be one as we are. Jesus' heartbeat is that the church, you and I, will be one. It breaks his heart when we are divided on all the things that divide us, ethnicity, race, our denominational ideas, theological stances. It brings God's heart, Jesus' heart, when he sees his church divided on these issues and on these lines. He's praying for the unity of the church. He's praying, he's not praying that we will be saved. He's praying that we will be one. It means that we can be one. We can be united even in our diversity. Just as he is different from the Father, he is different from the Holy Spirit, but they are one. They are one in essence. That is what he is praying for. So if you want to know the heartbeat of Jesus for the church, for you and I, we get it in his prayer life. As he's praying to the Father, he wants God to guard us and he wants us to be united. You know, as I thought about this test and as I studied it and as I was thinking about it, I was wondering why is this prayer recorded for you and I? Why is this prayer recorded for the church? And then as I thought about it, I realized that Jesus Christ wants us to join him in prayer. He wants us to join him to know exactly how we ought to pray. He wants us to join him in that prayer, in those prayer lines that he is praying. One of the things I have realized about prayer is that prayer does not only change things, but prayer has a way of changing us. It has a way of transforming us. Prayer has a way of preparing us to be even open to listen to other people. As we cry to God, as we join him to pray for, let us be one. You realize that he transforms our heart. He changes us and makes us ready to and open to listen to other people. Jesus Christ is covering you in prayer. He's always, he ever lives to make prayers for you. Will you join him? He wants us to join him in those prayers. If we want to see changes, if we want to see him do the things that he desires in this world, the best way and the place to start is to pray with him. It is good, it is refreshing to know that Jesus Christ is praying for you or for us. But it, it, we can take it a step further when we join him in his prayer. Jesus Christ 
is praying for you. Will you join him in prayer?